a good buddy of mine from across the pond, Chris from the channel Fragmental, tagged me in his four fragrances for life challenge. I've actually already done this video before, so why not do a refresher course? Let's start with designer fragrances today. Stay tuned. What's going on, everybody? My name is Joshua, and this is our channel, Scent Sense. For all loyal subscribers who continue to watch my videos each and every time these fine videos are uploaded to you fine folks across the globe. Thank you so much. And to all you new people who are maybe checking out the channel for the very first time, I promise not to let you down like these oil prices are letting me down. Oh, it's bad. Today we'll be talking about a really cool concept that came out quite a long while back, but apparently it's made its way back around and I decided, you know what, I may have already made this video, but let's just do a refresher course. So today I'll be talking about four designer fragrances, one for each season, spring, summer, fall, and winter. So if I had to choose one fragrance for each one of these scenarios, I chose to think about it from a versatility perspective. Yes, there are fragrances that I might like better for each of these seasons than the ones I chose, but the ones I chose, I feel like I could wear in the other seasons or in other situations. Situations being date nights, you know, going to work, everyday driver, special occasion scent, those kind of things. Jumping right into it, let's go and tackle the months of spring. For spring, I chose a fragrance from the house of Dior. No, it's not gonna be Dior Sauvage. It's from the Dior Oman, and no, it's not one of those heavier or dense Dior own fragrances such as Intense or Parfum, because clearly those wouldn't fit the bill. The fragrance I chose, in my opinion, is the best clean iris scent on the market, and also, in my humble opinion, is a much better alternative to Prada Lone. From the house of Dior, Dior Homme O. Dior Homme O is a super easy and safe iris-based fragrance. This is ultra clean, this is easy to wear, this is something that's gonna work for you in any occasion. The reason I chose this one is I can wear this to work, I can wear this to the office, I can wear this to a meeting, I can wear this to walk around the house, I can wear this to a family get together. It's just going to work and you're not gonna be offensive and you're just going to smell fresh and clean and approachable. This is one fragrance from the Dior Homme line that kind of tends to jump away from the rest of the Homme line. Uh, Dior Homme Cologne also does that, but this one does it when it comes to the note of iris. The rest of the iris-based fragrances are more uh, centric with the cocoa notes and they get a little darker and denser as you go with Homme, Intense, Parfum. This one, however, goes on the lighter side of the spectrum. This would be the Luke Skywalker of the Dior Homme line. So for my choice for spring, I felt like it was pretty easy for a fragrance to be super versatile. It would have to have the DNA of this fragrance and I chose Dior Homme's O. Moving into summer is a fragrance that is a Swiss Army Knife fragrance. This is something that can work at any time, any season, and it just falls right in summer because it's super fresh and it works pretty much, as I said, in any occasion. So versatility, versatility, versatility from the house of Versace, Versace's Porome. Or as, you know, Fragrance Night calls it, Signature. This was the originator and the starter of the flanker line that brought you Oud Noir and Versace Dylan Blue. This is a fresh, citrusy, easy to wear fragrance and draws a lot of comparisons to fragrances such as Chanel's Allure Homme Sport. In my opinion, this one is more fresh than that fragrance. That one has Tonka in it and gets a little sweet. To me, this is more summertime in a bottle. And this one right here, like I said, is much like the previous fragrance that I chose for spring in Dior Homme O. This can be worn at any time, any occasion. So call it cheating if you will. I had to have this one anyway. Favorite fragrance of all time. For summertime, Versace's Pour Homme. For the months of fall, I chose a fragrance that I have used for so long as a quintessential date night fragrance. I find this one to be ultra sexy. It doesn't have the best performance. It lacks longevity for sure. But when it comes to this fragrance, what it does in the opening and what it does on initial impression is fantastic. And in my opinion, a lot of times when it comes to a fragrance, you want people to be close and intimate with you. You need to have a fragrance that works that way and doesn't get super cloying. And with that being said, this fragrance does it very well. From the house of Dolce & Gabbana, 
Dolce & Gabbana the one, EDP. Recently, Dolce & Gabbana released the one Intense and a lot of people were very underwhelmed with that one. They thought they were gonna get a stronger version of this and this was a stronger version of the original. Having said that, this one, in my opinion, is the best of the three. It has the best of both worlds. This one's a lot more reminiscent of the original, and this one lasts a little bit longer than the original. Having said that, I wish this lasts longer, but at the same time, it's a snuggle fragrance. So you meet a girl, you, you start talking to her on a date in the first couple hours. Now she's gotten a little bit closer to you, she'll still be able to smell this. This, in my opinion, is a perfect time for those cooler months It'll really, really work with the warm and bright notes in this fragrance. Easy choice for me for the months of fall. Dolce & Gabbana's a one, EDP. Rounding out my list is a fragrance that I have talked about a lot. Some people probably would say ad nauseum, but this fragrance in my opinion is one of the most underrated gems in the fragrance community. I've heard other people mention it before, but I feel like it doesn't get the play that it deserves. From the house of Givenchy, Givenchy Play, Intense. For some of you who don't know what this was supposed to look like, this was supposed to look like an MP3 player. If you don't know what an MP3 player is, simply it was before a cell phone, it didn't make any phone calls, it just played music. So think a cell phone that could only play music. And you can't get on the internet with it either. I know, stupid, right? But moving right along from my reminiscent times of the 2000s and the early 90s, this fragrance was really, really good because it brought cocoa and coffee to the forefront in a fragrance, but didn't make it super artsy and didn't, didn't make it super hard to, for people to appeal to it or for people to like it. It was an accessible fragrance and it has high quality in it. In my opinion, this is one of those designer scents that's not super commercialized and it's not pumping you with everything else that everything else smells like. When it comes to the winter months, this one will definitely work. You'll smell sweet, you'll smell slightly seductive, but you'll smell alluring and you'll smell unique. In a world of a thousand and one fragrances, you wanna smell unique people. You don't wanna smell like your Sauvage all the time. This right here is gonna be one that I will always own. I hope to God I don't burn through this bottle. I've got a good bit of juice left in it, as you can see. I haven't put a huge dent in it. It's a sizable dent for someone who has as many bottles as I do, but at the end of the day, this one will really, really get a lot of play for me in the winter months. So if you're looking for something that's, you know, different and it kind of sets itself apart from the majority of the other fragrances out there that work really well in the months of fall and winter and are also a designer scent, look no further than Givenchy Play Intense. All right, Chris, I thank you so much for reaching out and tagging me. It meant a lot. You know, me and you came up at the same time. I took entirely too many breaks. That's why you left me in the dust. But I'm so happy for your tremendous success. So thank you so much for being such a good friend and being just a really cool guy. So I know a lot of people have done this video before and instead of sitting there and trying to single out singular people, I'm just gonna mention a lot of smaller channels that if they've been tagged or haven't been tagged for this, deserve a little notoriety. So this would be a, a double-edged sword. These are people that I think deserve a lot more attention because what they put out is quality. Some people I like to point out is Cam over at the channel Carolina Fragrance Review. I'd like to point out Dan over at the channel Scented Waters. I'd also like to point out 3280 Cents. I'd also like to put a shout out to my boy 504. He's from the boot, he's from Louisiana, so you know I gotta give him a shout out. And last but not least, my sister from another mister, Hillary over at the channel, Nerdy Fragrance Review, The Burrow. She's a really, really sweet woman. She's really, really cool, and she has a really kind heart. So Hillary, I'd love to see you do this. I'll go ahead and leave links to their channels in the description below. I'll also go ahead and leave a link to Chris's channel so you can know where this whole ball started from for me. And I wanna thank you so much for stopping by. If you made it to this point of the video, that means you've enjoyed what you've seen. So if you've enjoyed what you've seen, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to the channel? And while you're at it, go ahead and click that notification bell. That way you don't have to come back and check and see if my videos are up. You will be the first person to know because you will get notified. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for stopping by yet again. And as always, and most importantly, I'll smell each and every one of you later. Peace.